House. Home. Heaven. Everyone should have a mark on their page. Now those that need to fall asleep may. You haven't passed, though. Uh, a couple weeks ago, pastor asked me to speak on this day, and before I thought about it, I said, oh, yes. <laughs> Earlier this week, Pete gave me a call. Pete's in charge of the worship service. And by the way, Pete, thank you for the great music that you put together. It really ties in with where we're going today. So I appreciate it. And I said, um, that's a good question, Pete. But I'll let you know. So I had to start thinking about it. And I was uh, sitting at the table this week, middle of the week, and I was watching the grandkids, Jared maybe even been playing, a game called Sorry. Anybody know that game? Yes. Oh, there it is. And of course, that game can be very fun and very frustrating at the same time, right? Yes? Yes? So I was watching everybody play the game with the goal of getting their piece, their marker to home. Home. Do you get it? And I got to thinking, wow, why didn't they call that finish? They could have called it anything, but they called it home. And it got my mind thinking about home and what home means and safety and togetherness. I remember in the days going to college, coming home. And my mother was and father were so glad to see me, even though behind me I had this duffel bag, right? And guess what it was full of? Dirty clothes laundry. And every time I came home, I brought that same gift to my mother. <laughs> but she never turned me away. And what was so good is that I knew after my stay, whether it was two days or seven days or whatever it was, I would go away with nice, fresh, laundered clothes maybe even some new clothes, all pressed and nice, so that I might impress someone. I hate to admit it, and even after I started living by myself when I went home, I still brought the little duffel bag. I was never turned away. What does home mean to you? Safety? An edifice? A certain place? Today, I want to have you think about the definition of home, meaning a place of origin. A place of origin. Before my story starts, there's a prologue. Jesus and God. We need to have a plan. Before we create the world, we need to have a plan. We need to make sure that there is a way, a way for every creature created to find their way home should sin infest their lives. No problem, Father. I volunteer myself. I understand that death is the wage of sin. And so I will die for all. Are you sure, son? Yes, I am sure. And the plan was laid. In case. 
the evil one won the heart of a single individual. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was a perfect, perfect home made for all humanity. God created the earth, not for two, but for humanity. And he created us in his image. Think about Eden, the garden. We've heard about that before. I'd like for you, just for a moment, to close your eyes. Close your eyes. And picture the garden. This home that God made for humanity. Do you feel the breeze? Feel it. Smell the air. What scents do you, do you, do you smell? What's under your feet? Is it soft? Take a step or two. There's a plant that brushed up against you. What is it? Reach down. Touch it. There's a flower. Smell it. Listen to the songs the birds are singing. Then you hear the voice. Jesus says, Welcome. Welcome. Life is beautiful in this home. A home perfect because God is there. Boom! Okay, if you haven't opened your eyes, you can open them now. All of a sudden, things are changed. Sin infects humanity. The perfect home is taken away. And as you look back, you see the guardians saying, you are no longer able to live in a home like you did before. God tells Adam and Eve, wait a minute, we already have a plan. Salvation is assured. God has planned a way for you to get back home. God's greatest desire is for us to come back home. The journey for humanity to get back home begins with the promise that it is true. Humanity continues to rebel against God, and humanity continues to rely on themselves, their knowledge, what they think is best. God needs a restart. God needs a restart. God selects a righteous man, Noah. Noah, I want you to build an ark. And I want you to save animals. And I want you to take your family. And let's start again. Humanity needs another chance. There is a way home. And God chooses Noah to lead humanity in that direction. The ark rests. The dove flies. The dove doesn't come back. Noah and his family exit. And the first thing they do is build an altar. Right? God says, welcome. You are on the way home. Never again will I destroy the earth in this way. And he reaffirms that with a a rainbow. God continues choosing people to reveal salvation, to continue understanding his covenant. Genesis 12, God calls Abraham. I need a people who will help me lead humanity on the journey back home. And so he calls Abraham 
Welcome. You are on your way home. Let's build a home together with God as our beacon. God chooses Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Failure, failure again. God is insistent. He's not giving up on humanity. God chooses a man, Moses, to follow God as he leads his chosen home. And he leads them to a promised land. An earthly example of God's power and might in those 40 years. God continues to call and lead. Humanity continues to rebel against God and rely on their own knowledge. God continues to lead humanity on their journey home. Ruth, Samuel, Esther, David, Solomon, Job, Isaiah, Daniel, Zechariah, all and others called by God to deliver a message of salvation and hope for humanity, leading his people home, back home again. It's time to initiate the plan, the plan of salvation. God's salvation's time has come. The road home will be revealed now by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so we have this miraculous birth. Jesus is now amongst us. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will pro proclaim peace to the nations. He will rule, and extend, his rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free you from the waterless pit. Return to your home, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. That's from Zechariah. Christ is born. The journey home is now directed by the light of the world. Jesus himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way home. Every word, every miracle, every action that Jesus shows and does tells you that there is a way home. Jesus, in every act, is calling humanity, please, Welcome. It's free. Follow me. Homeward. Nicodemus came, asked, Lord, Lord, what must I do? You must be born again. That didn't make sense. What do you mean born again? Jesus said, you must be willing to walk a new life of service for others and not service to self. Change your direction. Set new priorities. John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John chapter 3. He did not come to condemn but to save and to show humanity the way back home. <clears throat> Feeding of the 5,000. Jesus tells us here, 
serve those in need. The healing of the lepers. Here, understand, Jesus is saying, let's break down bigotry and fear. The blessing of the children. Protect those who are helpless and harmless. Love them that need love. The right raising of Lazarus. Love of family and friends is vital. The blind man, the lame man, the bleeding woman, on and on. Jesus filled his life with teaching, kindness, the service, telling us this, these things are the way home. His crucifixion. He paid the price for our admittance back home. The resurrection. He opened the door to our new home. The light of the world taught us to love God, serve others, have faith and trust in our Father God. We have freedom to come home. Yes, there is a new home. Our text this morning, Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There is a home. It is prepared. It is prepared for you. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, Jesus himself with us. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Just like humanity's first home. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there any be more, any more pain, for the former things are passed away like it was in humanity's first home. And he sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, These words are true and faithful. A perfect home, once again, prepared by the creator of the first home and a maker for our next home. A place prepared for all, Full circle. Victory over sin through Jesus. A restoration extraordinaire by Christ himself. Jesus is calling you home, me home, humanity home. Behold, I make all things new. I have prepared a place for you. Dirty laundry? Give it to Jesus. In fact, he asks for it. He is prepared to clean it. Our lives have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, and our laundry, our lives, are now white as snow. Close your eyes. It's our new home. Do you feel the breeze? Do you smell the air? What's under your feet? Is it hard like gold? Soft grass? You brush up against a flower. What is it? Smell it. Listen to the sounds of the birds. What song are the birds singing? The birds are singing in harmony. Hear the running water flowing from the throne of God. Listen. Do you hear it coming from the mountain? The city orchestra is playing crown him with many crowns. And then you hear the voice of Jesus. Welcome home. 